Jeannie. This is my handmade home in New York City. This is Tater Tut, my English Bulldog. He's seven years old. He kind of runs the show around here. He's actually the social media manager of my business. He doesn't do a lot, except he makes some appearances in Instagram. So I have a lifestyle curation company, and what we do is help people who are overwhelmed, disorganized, and constantly stressed by mental and physical clutter. However, I also love stuff, and I'm not capable of just admiring one thing. I have to suddenly make it a collection. I'm a maximist, but I'm also an organizer, and I think what's really important is that you need to have a discerning eye, but you also need to curate and kind of keep collections and things together. In my living room, I really only have one wall in which to place a lot of art and the television, so I kind of created a salon wall and, and put most of my art together there. I actually have this carnival railing. It's from the UK. It's the railing on a carousel, and I didn't really have a place for it, but it ended up being perfect as like to top off the TV, because sometimes when you put art over it, it looks a little diminutive, it's small, and this was so big, and it just fit perfectly, and it kind of lends itself to the cartoony, vintage, colorful feel of my apartment. Uh, this is probably my favorite collection and most active of my collections. It's Carnival Chalkware. I decided to go a little psycho and really put them all together. A lot of people think they're kind of creepy. I don't. I think they're cute. They're crudely painted, but they're not creepy. I've got the Lone Ranger, and he's got hot pink pants on. The Lunchbox collection is probably my oldest collection. I don't get to buy Lunchboxes too often anymore because they're so rare and also they're really expensive. But I have been lucky enough to get a couple of my favorite. I love this dome top, that's what this style of Lunchbox is called, but the Bozo the Clown dome top I love. And then also, I mean, disco. And I went rainbow order because I felt like it just made it easier on the eyes when you looked at it and it didn't become overwhelming. I have been coveting this wallpaper for years. It's called Luxury, and it's got rainbows and diamonds and stars and interiors of private planes and hot rods, Shelby hot rods in there. I just love it, but when you step away from it, it actually has like kind of a Japanese koi feeling to it. And I just was like, I have to live with this wallpaper. It has to be here. When I moved to this apartment, it had a great modern light that came with the apartment, but no, that's not okay for me. I had to have my pink chandelier present in the apartment. It's, it's every thing, this chandelier. I love it. It's bright, it's colorful, it's like candy to me. Instead of a traditional chain cover, I decided to insert fake flowers all the way up and kind of create this cornucopia to the ceiling and it kind of just looks like it belongs in a garden. Normally I don't like advocate having all of your collections in the kitchen. Generally I try and bring in food themed collections like my Bob Big Boy. I also have the Colonel. This just happened to be the perfect space for this. Uh, it's my bobblehead collection. The most important part of my kitchen is my yellow ceiling. Uh, I can't live without yellow paint. I have to have yellow paint somewhere in my home. So I thought that having a sunny ceiling in the kitchen was the thing that made the most sense. I have this light fixture that is from a carousel railing from the UK. I had it wired for American Standard. It's kind of like my showtime lighting. And then we can't forget the wallpaper. So it's actually the same exact story as the wallpaper in the living room. It's in teal. I have this piece of furniture that came from Ikea like in 1990 and it was just basic, but it is so indispensable that I have yet to let go of it. And I decided to cover it all up with pinup girls. I actually did these bottle caps and I filled them all with like glitter and then images I love. And then you'll see the reason why I can't let go of this. It holds all my t-shirts. It's perfect. And so I get to have something fun and whimsical and colorful and kitschy and a little sexy in the bedroom. I always had this thing for like toolkits as nightstands. I love it. I actually had plexi cut for the top so it's mirrored. And then inside what I ended up doing, it's got a lot of storage, but um, as Tater will demonstrate, um, I covered it all with oil cloth because one cannot have enough oil cloth in their lives. Um, you see a little sample of the wallpaper because I literally have been begging for this wallpaper for so long. But I love it. I love that it brings a like industrial element into a very girly, pinky kind of bedroom.
I think the things that you love are, are absolutely timeless. If you really love them, they're timeless. Hi, my name is Judy Aldridge, and this is my handmade home in Fort Worth, Texas. My connection to art actually is more of a recent thing. I started adding to my art collection and just completely fell in love with collecting art. I just love to see the way that other people express themselves. And I was primarily collecting vintage art, but then I thought, okay, well, these artists have kind of come and gone. And then I thought, you know, I really can support new and upcoming artists, knowing how hard it is to break into that world. It really started with Instagram and constantly changing my house around. My Instagram handle is at Atlanta's home and I just love that whole design community. You can meet someone who is just as far out as you are, who are people that are much crazier than, than I am with their designs, so I love that. I moved into this house 15 years ago. It looked really, really bad. It was terrible. This horrible carpet that I'm not even sure what color it was originally because it had been on the ground for so long. It was just filth. And lots of chintzy or, or little dainty wallpapers. And it was just, it was kind of a mess. And lots of country and Western railing, like a country and Western bar. But I like the bones of it. That kind of, kind of had that modern vibe that I liked. My sister and I, we um, acid washed the floors because I didn't want to have put wood floors down. So those have evolved a bit, but these, these, this is like the foundation. The concrete floors give it kind of a lofty feel. I've always felt like this is a house that's very casual. And if you try to add things that are very fancy, it just, it just doesn't work. It, it would look pretentious or out of place. I think it should be a very simple place. I would describe my style, it, that it's really hard because I think the word eclectic is just overused. So I'm gonna say that it's evolving, that it's collected, and hopefully it's cool. <laughs> right now we're in my living room. Some of my favorite things in this space, one of them is this basket that I found at the thrift store, which was a great find. I know a lot of people remember this from my Instagram. It was a big deal, everyone was freaking out when I found it, and so his name is Stuart. That's one of my favorite things. I love my Rob Eckhart chairs. The way that I started adding color back into my life was the purchase of the hot pink chairs. People always call them red, and they're not, they're hot pink. When you pull up the top rooms on Instagram or whatever, there's a lot of beige, there's a lot of gray, there's a lot of white. When I bought these into my house, it was just like kind of life-changing. I just thought this is, wow, this is really fun. I want more of this. So one of my favorite pieces is this horse. And unfortunately, we can't decipher the name of the artist, but it was actually like an edition of 19. It makes you really wonder where the other 18 of these <laughs> exist. So this pineapple is from Mexico. It's from the Michoacan region. They're really known for this style. Of, I, I, I believe it's terracotta. This is one of the larger ones and I don't recommend importing one because it was a real challenge to get it here. I have a lot of books because I think people talk about meditation. For me, books, that is, that's my meditation. And I reference design constantly, constantly. I'm always like, oh, what about that? Or I remember that image. I wanna go back and see that image because there was something I liked about it. Then I also have a lot of vintage books. And some of the 80s design is so inspiring to me, or old Santa Fe design. Now we are in my dining room. I do like to cook, so I wanted to have a nice place where we could sit down and, and have a nice dinner. But also I wanted it to be a multitasking, multifunctional space where I could have my reference books, put my computer, sit down and get some work done too. Of note, the Serenin table, it's the only new piece of furniture in my house um, I gave in and to my husband and we got the Serenin table and, and I do love it. It's really nice and it's a little bit smaller and so it kind of fits the space a little bit better. So this is my kitchen. For me, I will always have an all white kitchen. I want a place that's bright and cheerful. I wanted a, a farm table as opposed to a kitchen island because I just wanted it to feel more like your grandma's kitchen. 
For me, open shelving works. These are the bowls that I make my dog's dog food in this. So these are definitely the things that I use. So this is my entryway. I change it around a lot. Sometimes I'll have a cool long table here, some great lighting, sculpture. But right now, it is definitely just reflecting the whole art gallery feeling from the living room with just a lot of great pieces of art and the warm platinum chair. Let's go upstairs. You know, I'm just constantly inspired by vintage pieces. It's not just about saving money, but it's about making your home look like your own space instead of like, oh, I know you just got that at so-and-so. It makes it look collected instead of just purchased. Right now we're upstairs in my loft and this is my favorite room in the house. It's where I come to have a cup of tea. Some of my favorite things are these busts, which are vintage Horchow, and I found them in a dusty old shop in Arizona and drove my husband crazy because I had to hand carry them back on the plane. And he was just like, no, can we just please leave them? And I was like, no, these have to come with us. So they kind of uh, dictated the rest of our trip. I made these paintings from paper mache paper mache the frames and then did the little flat canvases, but the frames are supposed to be kind of a funny take on faux bois. The thing that I love about paper mache is the freedom. You have to just make whatever the heck you want. And it's cheap and it's like recycling and it's not too precious. When you're dealing with flour, water, and newspaper, it's like, I can just mess this up and no one's gonna care. This is for my grandson that's on the way and I'm so excited. So this is Henry's nursery. My design approach to this room was just, I'm not gonna buy anything for this nursery other than the crib, literally everything else. I have the rug, the curtains, all the art. This painting on the wall, my daughter Jane did, and it's like a little baby dinosaur, so I thought it was just perfect to have in Henry's nursery. The thing that I love most about design, I guess, is just the freedom to make your space look the way that you want it to look. So design makes your life better. I'm Allie, and this is my handmade home in Queens, New York. I'm a freelance display artist. I do production and design. I've done set design. Um, I do a lot of styling, propping, sourcing. And when I'm not freelancing, I own a small vintage business called Farewell Trading where I sell a curated collection of vintage and antiques, accessories, decor um, on Etsy. It's really hard to describe my style. I mean, I think I tend to have like a masculine aesthetic. I'm really big on color stories. My collection is from the late 1800s to present. Certain things just speak to me. Most of the time I have no idea what they are or the history about it. I just, I just buy whatever I like and I figure it out later. That's the best part about vintage to me. It's fun. I don't take it too seriously. I think it should bring up emotions and memories. I just love funny little moments that you know you could just look at and smile. When I first saw the house, I, one of the things that made me fall in love with it was how open it is. I mean, you could see the whole length of the house from the front to the back. The view of the cemetery is one of my favorite things about the house. A lot of people don't think it's great, but um, I, I love it. We like go biking through there, we run through there. It's just a gorgeous amenity across the street. Um, and then in the back of the house, we have a very large church. It's so another beautiful thing to look at. The front sunroom has been about four different shades of pink. It took me a really long time to find like the perfect shade that went with the wallpaper, the plants, and then like the yellows and blacks in the living room. And I just finally found this like dusty pink that I think works with everything. Finally, finally right. Welcome to my jungle. Um, this is the highest concentration of plants in any room of the house. It's also the sunniest. There's some old cameras that I found in Prague. Um, this, I love collecting like New York World's Fair items. Um, I just think they're so cool, like such a cool part of New York history. My parents actually got married at Flushing Meadows Park, so it's just like, I just love it. This is a planter I made from an old doll head that I use to display air plants. It's kind of fun. I mean, the house is over 100 years old, 
So things not being too updated and, and modern works with it. I think the kitchen has like a perfect vintage feel, but it's just modern enough. This kitchen backsplash came with the house. Um, I am in love with it. Something about it really speaks to me. Just the colors, the, the imagery, just like the lightning and the sun faces. And it's just like really cool and unique and I've never seen anything like it and I love it. So these are one of my most recent finds. They're uh, vintage luster wear from Japan, ceramic. They're just so much fun and interactive, therapeutic. Love spinning them. Love, love them. I decided to paint my entire dining room blue because I wanted to do like a primary color thing in here. It's just my favorite color in the house. It, I feel like it goes with everything. I photograph all my products for farewell trading against it. I just, I love it. This is Zero. He's also a part of the art. So this is a vintage bullseye mirror. Uh, I love how gold and gaudy it is and I feel like it just really tops off the bar cart and they're very popular in my vintage shop. Sell a lot of them. So when we first moved in, um, the living room was this like hot red and there was this giant TV wall unit that took up the whole wall. Um, it just felt so small in there. So I knew I wanted to paint it white and do like a big gallery wall around the television. That's why I chose to balance the wall out with black because the TV is just like a black screen. Like the shiny panther kind of balances it out and then a lot of the blacks in the artwork balance it out so your eye is drawn around the TV rather than at the TV. The collection ranges from like the late 1800s, um, nothing too present. This is a piece of art from my mother, this tiger silk screen, uh, as well as the zebra silk screen. And then these ceramic cats are old pipe rests, but I hung them on the wall because I think they look so cool and I don't smoke pipe. So I have a small cabinet of curiosities, just like a random collection of things that I love. My little eyes that I use as props when I do photography for feral trading. I have this fun postcard that kind of spins. This is my great grandmother in her Czechoslovakian garb. Just a very old hand colored photo, I love it. It kind of like tells a story about me without having to say anything and kind of just like, I hope people get the humor and things that I have displayed. So handsome. He's been waiting for his big moment. Yep. So this is kind of just like my entrance display of just a few photos of certain family members. Um, my grandmother, my mother, my mom, mom, grandma, my grandfather. He's the only boy here. A little nudie one of my grandma. Yes, the wallpaper is original to the house. Like a lot of people would take that down before selling their house, but um, I'm just so happy that the old owners left it up because I feel like it was just destined to be my wallpaper. The wallpaper starts at the front of the living room and it goes all the way upstairs. Uh, it's throughout the whole hallway and I love it. This is my peacock. Uh, he's from a pop-up display when the store closed. I got to take him home. Um, my husband made a beautiful little perch for him to sit on. Um, and I think he just like goes really well with the wallpaper. So it made sense. So the portrait gallery wall of bearded men, um, I was originally hired by a client to source all of these. When the store closed, I ended up acquiring them for my collection. And it's one of my favorite collections just because it's one theme. It's just bearded men, you know? That one's my favorite. <laughs> this guy. I write everything down. I have so many notebooks. These are all just like filled with all sorts of things. Um, I don't have a computer. <laughs> I have an iPad, but I just, I have to write everything down when I'm like sourcing or 
meeting with my clients. I show up with like a pencil and a notebook. Um, so these are my books of secrets. Measurements, sketches, my brain in a book. This is my little stock closet where I keep things for my vintage shop. Um, I just recently found these little ceramic Dalmatian bookends. I just think the silhouette is beautiful. The colors also. Um, a good mix of things, some artwork, crates, whatever I like, I buy, sell it, keep it, whatever. I want people to feel like they're in a museum in a way. Um, I want people to look at everything and like wonder what something is, um, like the anatomy of the hot dog cell thing. It makes me just so happy. I don't know why. <laughs>
I was at an estate sale recently and it was the home of an artist who had passed away and all of his life's work was in the home so there were hundreds of portraits and I was shocked when I got to the sale and found that none of the dealers were there for the portraits so I had the option of hundreds to choose from and it was a little overwhelming and I picked up 18 of them thinking that that was a lot of portraits to bring home and I thought oh I'll sell half of these keep a couple and then I added them to the wall and then I realized that I didn't have enough. So now I'll be trying to find some more portraits to add. I really envisioned them covering almost every inch of the white wall. The library space is definitely my favorite and I love just escaping in there in the very small amount of free time that I get with having two young children and I love being surrounded by the books and the plants and I think it just has enough color to be very cheerful and happy and muted enough where you can feel relaxed in that space. So it's probably the room I'm most proud of designing. It just I kind of nailed exactly what I was going for, I think. I envisioned the shelves having the book collection that I've been collecting for four or five years now, but also being kind of a live plant wall but there were some logistical issues, such as this half of the bookshelves not getting any natural light. So we found this product from Mod Sprout and their grow frames, there's a grow light inside, so that I could bring the greenery onto this side of the shelves. I think my middle finger is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I found this at a estate sale that was all mid-century stuff and it was, in his basement, like man cave bar, and I just spray painted it gold, and it's my favorite, it's very welcoming. <laughs> Some of my plants are actually even thrifted. This enormous euphorbia cactus thing, I found at an estate sale, and they're super expensive when you get them from a nursery, but I got it for a hundred bucks, and I realized it was a hundred dollars because everyone else at that sale was like, how the hell would I get this huge thing home? <laughs> So we got it home by <laughs> putting the thing on the back of my dad's pickup truck and me essentially hugging it, going 40 miles an hour down the road. Really, I mean, I almost gave my life for this thing, right? <laughs> and then I find out about it when you when you roll up in the in the driveway and yeah, say, I need you truck. to come get a cactus out of the truck. <laughs> I'm like, all right. That's, nor that's normal for that's, us. That's it's normal totally things. normal for us. <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> Just staring at me. She likes to eat everything. Yeah. Literally She's everything. She's eaten couches and shoes and toys and... There have been a few <laughs> things that I, we've, I've had to like hide after the dog has eaten it because I'm like, oh, that's not good. Like something you've just what? brought home, some type of vintage thing you've brought home. See, those are the things that you just don't ever tell me. <laughs> now I'm gonna be thinking, what, what did you eat, Ripley? What did you eat? <laughs> So we have no closets on our ground floor, so we need this space to be a highly functional space, yet play into the whole design. So straight on into the kitchen where you see my orange bar stools, picked up that same color and put it on the wall here so it would carry your eye into both spaces. Watch your head. So this is probably my longest running collection. They're all antique or vintage. Some people find this wall super creepy. They're like, oh, so you just have a bunch of dead people on your wall. A lot of them are really old, but I don't see it that way. I just love the character of all of the different silhouettes. And a lot of them have the writing on the back saying what year they were made and the person's name. and. I just love that sort of thing. You know, it's a great conversation piece, and everyone that walks in the house is always immediately drawn to this wall. You dead people wall. I dead people wall. I think we've been here for maybe a year at most, and I came home and Katie was ripping tiles off the wall in the bathroom, um, doing a, a very bad job and ripping up all the the drywall underneath. <laughs> so, um, needless to say, I. I I had to take over after that, so that's how we got our first project started. Yeah, so I really wanted to have a vintage dresser in this space. From a DIY perspective, this is a perfect example of kind of implementing her vision. Obviously with the drawers, they, they go back and they take up the entire space, and we wanted to make sure that 
we could be able to put the sinks with the drains and all of the water supply in, but make the drawers still functional. So that was, you know, we had to do basically surgery on these drawers and, you know, some of them have sections in the middle that we can't put anything, that we just built kind of squares in or, or cutouts so that they go around the pipes and they're still usable. I have so much fun with kids' spaces because you can just go wild with color and whimsy. This is our daughter Eva's room. She just turned seven. And this house bed is the only piece that came from our old house. She was two when we bought it and she still loves it just as much to this day. This Russian nesting doll collection, this is how I get her to come to estate sales with me by telling her, hey, we'll find some Russian nesting dolls. And this Art Deco fireplace I found in a really disgusting basement and it was a project to get it all cleaned up and painted. So we're in our younger daughter Josie's room. She's about two and a half years old. This bed is a perfect example of Kate just falling in love with something and needing to have it in the space because it is old enough that it's not a standard size. So we can't get a standard mattress. It's, what is it called, like three quarters? Yeah, it's like a three quarters mattress. So you have to have them special made, but I found that an RV mattress actually fits on the bed. So she has an RV mattress. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of spaces that are just put together exactly right or pieces that don't have the little chip or patina. I think that just adds character and we tried to give that sort of character to every space we create. When people come into our space, they usually walk in like, oh, hey, what's up? And then they'll look to the side and be like, what the? <laughs> and it's like immediately very Im impactful and hopefully very transformative. We walk five steps in and you're just in another zone completely. I'm Chatham, and this is my handmade home in Birmingham, Alabama. Well, initially when we got this space, I was going for like a 1970s Scarface ultra-modern <laughs> look, which immediately like got, got the can. I realized that I had too much stuff to be even like aspiring to that look. It's just ridiculous. Like this cabinet has some fun junk in it. Practical, sensible brown dress with glasses for day-to-day -day wear. So in the past, I used to have a boutique called Charm and it was one of several boutiques that I've owned. I would go to a ton of estate sales, ostensibly to be looking for the shop, but Let's face it, like the really good stuff, I would say like, oh, this is great for charm. And then I would, of course, bring it home and hoard it and add it to the collection of knick-knack paddywhack <laughs> that you see before you to this very day. I grew up on Long Island. I collected things on the beach because I was basically a hoarder in training from like day one. They were like like treasures. I mean, they felt like mermaids' treasures or something. And I still, if I see a beautiful shell at an estate sale or in an antique mall or something like that, I'll get it. Oh, this guy here is Percy, no big deal. I don't know how Percy went out, but I know he went out a while ago. And I always kind of wanted to pet a fox. He feels really nice. There are so many things about the things that I pick that I respond to. Um, if it's ridiculous, I love that. If it's ghoulish a little, love that. Just out and out dumb, I love that. If it's super unusual, if it's very made with very labor intensive processes, if it's kind of a lost art, anything glittery, anything sparkly, anything kind of talismanic, um, just, it just sends me. I mean, I just love it. When I travel, I like to pack like 
a ridiculously small amount of stuff in a suitcase that fits under the seat. And then I bring empty collapsible bags to carry home. So going there, I'm packing like a ninja and coming home, I'm like, like just loaded down with extra bags and carry-ons and having to check suitcases and all that kind of stuff. This guy is, um, he's an African uh, fetish figure, mostly from China, founded in Mexico from the flea market in Paris. And I walked around the flea market like four times. You never know what you're gonna find. And the idea of being open to it and not only getting a cool souvenir, but getting a, like a beautiful object as well is really exciting to me. So the gallery wall was a giant, giant pain in the ass to hang. It's my favorite DIY project of this place because if I sit down, every time I look, I notice something else that's sort of thrilling or ridiculous or silly or funny. It's taken probably six months to get to this point. It took a long time. Believe it or not, there was actually editing involved. <laughs> For every single thing that's out, there are probably, there's probably another thing to match it that's jammed into storage in the basement or jammed up in a closet or just jammed up where anything is jammable. And um, cooking doesn't really happen up in this piece. So this guy is a pretty handy dandy storage spot for Stuff that I'll never use, but is extremely fancy. So um, basically, this is a fancy paperweight and a storage box. I've always been a big fan of books. I didn't collect them for their color. I just happen to have so many books that I <laughs> eventually could arrange them by color. It's kind of like trying to make a lot of sense out of nonsense. So to create zones within the loft, we I just tried to do it through like furniture groupings and this area that we're sitting in has the rugs and that kind of zones it out as like kind of a chill out relaxation zone. So I think the only way to like make it look comprehensive is to group like stuff with like and to limit the palette because I feel like since I'm not willing to edit my stuff so much, I have to edit something about it. When people are in here, I definitely want them to feel first welcome, second kind of transformed, third, it would be kind of cool if they felt curious. Like I want them to walk around and look at these things because I enjoy walking around and looking at all these amazing things. And if they want to open cabinets or open drawers or open cat, whatever they want to, whatever they want to look at, they can look at. Um, it's all, it's all kind of joyful, even if it's not terribly well organized or if it's a messy drawer, it's still, it's still fun to look. Like this video and subscribe to Handmade for more home tours just like this. Mm -hmm.